So welcome. Welcome to the best session. <laughs> Hold the program. I've been chairing Japan session for several years uh, at Milken events. But I can say this is the best panel ever. I, I'm very sorry to the previous panels, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, contents-wise, panelist-wise, and timing-wise. Uh, let me share a very interesting one episode with you uh, that happens very recently. Uh, I was with a, a very interesting person in Tokyo before coming here. He spent several days over there. His name is very iconic, Mr. Mike Milken. <laughs> so, uh, I arranged uh, several meetings with uh, super VIPs, very powerful people in politics and uh, business. So every time I call uh, them up, they ask me, okay, Tamura-san, I'm very busy, so who is coming? Uh, Mr. Mike Milken, wow, he's coming back? That means we are coming back. So how do you describe uh, Mr. Milken? So you can say it's a uh, king of Wall Street, or the emperor of the junk bond. But I think uh, I can describe him as, uh, you know, he's a person who finds the opportunity in difficulties, opportunities in challenges. So I cannot share the contents of the meeting, every meeting, but you know, I can say that, you know, I think he smells something. Smells something moving in Japan. He's the person he decides by, sim by himself, and he will waste no precious time of him. So he spent several days means, you know, it's for the first time since many years he touched down on my beautiful country and spent time, spent time with our leaders. So something is moving. Uh, how many of you were uh, in, sitting in the plenary panel yesterday? Thank you. So, exceptionally, you know, he was talking a lot about my country. So, I think uh, I strongly recommend uh, you better follow him <laughs> by Japan. I'm not sure he's, Japan, he's buying Japan or not, but you know, he's interested in. I think this is a good sign. And uh, that it, it, it is a very low profile visit. We don't take any media interview, but uh, word of mouth spread from the leadership. Mike Megan come back, Mike Megan come back. So maybe we have to do something and uh, we can do something. So very interesting time Japan is. How many of you, by the way, uh, have an investment in any form in Japan? Okay, how many of you uh, think you try to increase that. Thank you. Good, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so how many of you have a guts to say you, you uh, try to decrease that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't bite you, <laughs> but uh, I feel sorry for you. So, <laughs> so I was asked the same question at the end of this event. <clears throat> I think I know the change. <laughs> what kind of change will happen? So, as I have mentioned uh, today, I have the best panelists. Allow me to introduce uh, the great panelists. Uh, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Or oh, if you can, uh, missing something, please add. So which order should I start? Uh, maybe gender-wise. Japan is, uh, you know, right now it's uh, pushing women up. So yeah. ladies first. Okay. <laughs> Tashiro-san. So he's the executive managing director of the Daiwa Securities Group. Daiwa Securities is one of the largest investment bank in Japan. And he's the highest ranking uh, business leaders. Uh, she, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes. uh, yeah, my English is not correct. So. <laughs> this is, I'm Japanese, sorry. So uh, she is the highest ranking business leader, at least in the field of finance. And he used to be the head of the Daiwa operation in the United States. So he knows inside, outside. <laughs> uh, she knows, yes. Uh, trouble, you know. I had too much tequila last night, so you know, I, it should be sake. So, uh, 
Okay, after gender rights, let me go back to the Japanese style, seniority. So, maybe you? <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Mr. Legend. Legendary hotelier. Everyone they know. Adrian Zekasan. Thank you for joining us. How many of you are Aman junkies, Aman hoppers? The definition of the Aman junkies is a stay at least three different amounts in the world. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, lucky guy, yes. <laughs> Have you ever been to the Aman Tokyo? Beautiful, beautiful. And the Aman name in Isashima, central Japan. That's the very first Aman with onsen, hot spring. You shouldn't miss it. Only 24 rooms. So he will tell you more about why he sit in the Japan panel, mysterious, right? <laughs> And then uh, going back to the very fair order, uh, alphabetical order, because they are in the same age. Uh, Saito-san. Saito-san is uh, Japan's uh, Steve Jobs, uh, Sergey Brin, and Mark Zuckerberg combined. <laughs> so he is much more than that, I think. <laughs> so he is uh, developing uh, the world's fastest supercomputers. Uh, per energy consumption, three times in a row already. And uh, he will change in the world. He used to be a medical doctor, interesting career. He quit uh, medical doctor, uh, uh, he quit his career as a medical doctor, and uh, after seven months, he developed a very fast supercomputer. It ranked number one uh, computing power per energy uh, consumption. So he's a kind of genius. I think he's the future of the Japan's technology, and he will be the person who try to bring about singularity faster than the United States, faster than China, I hope. Uh, finally, Shibayama-san. Shibayama-san is a member of the parliament, and uh, Shibayama-san is a special advisor to Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe. He's a light-handed guy to Prime Minister Abe. And he is in charge of very important agendas, such as falling labor issues and uh, corporate governance. Especially he's a champion of the corporate governance. So I will ask him a lot about what's going on, the economics new version. Thank you. Allow me to talk about myself. Uh, I'm uh, Kotaro Tamura. I'm a professor at the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy National University of Singapore, and I'm a fellow at the Milken Institute. I used to be a member of the parliament uh, with uh, Shibayama-san, and I was a, a, parliament, a parliamentary secretary of the cabinet office in charge of the fiscal and economic policy making under the, uh, Shinzo Abe's uh, very fast administration. And I'm running several business, uh, including my family business is the uh, largest supplier of the business suits in Japan like this. <laughs> if you like it, uh, <laughs> if you sit until the end of the session, I might think about the super discount. <laughs> on you. <laughs> okay, uh, let's start. Zeka-san, tell me why you are sitting here. <laughs> well, um, Japan is one of my favorite countries. And at the moment, uh, for the company which I founded about 30 years ago, which is Aman Resorts, which is a very specialized uh, boutique type. We, we pioneered uh, a hospitality product which is not more than 50 rooms, and, and with the highest, of course. You know, our business, as I was explaining earlier, uh, is basically, of course, a twin product. It is both the hardware and the software. The hardware is this, where you can, where you can see, and you can feel, you can touch. But, of course, the most important aspect of that is the service aspect, which is the service product. Mm. And Japan is masterful in that, because all of you who have been to Japan, I don't have to explain to you what is so special about Japan. But the courtesy, the, the politeness, the warmth in terms of service, the attentive, the intuitive service, which is more difficult than the, the road, the, the, that, that most hotels have mm. uh, is unique. So when I was invited to, to come and extol the virtues mm. of 
hospitality in Japan, mm. I said, of course, I will be happy to do that. So one of the biggest pillar of the Abenomics is the tourism, inbound tourism. So actually, Japan's, uh, uh, the visitor to Japan is uh, increasing very rapidly. Uh, 60, uh, five years ago, uh, when we hit by the earthquake, big earthquake and a tsunami, the visitor to Japan is something like a 7 million. But this year, we'll be having 25 million. So do you think Japan can be the very you know, successful tourist destination among all? Well, actually, I find, uh, well, you know, I should start at the beginning. And that is that it's obvious. Uh, to everyone who just thinks about it, is that the larger the economy of a country, mm. the less important tourism is. And then Japan is one of the most developed industrial countries in the world. And so the tourism profile in Japan is basically domestic. Mm. Yeah. Every school child in Japan, before he finishes his education, will have seen a lot of his country, which is fantastic. And, and, and I wish more countries would have that same profile. But of course, what it, what it means also is that the international arrivals, the, 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 what is basically generating the tourism industry's uh, wealth, if you will, or, or, or profitability, is very, very minimal, has been. Mm. Now, I sense that there's, there's a change in that. Mm. coming up, mm. because Japan is, well, one of, uh, one of the most important things today is security, the sense of, of safety. Mm. And Japan is absolutely secure. And, and I, I, I see, you see young women walking the streets at night, for example, and so on, absolutely without any fear of, of any violence or any attacks or anything like that. So it's one of the safest countries. Number two, for Asia itself, and of course, the neighboring country, uh, countries for Japan are important in terms of inward, uh, inbound uh, traffic. And that is because of the distance. Mm. For example, uh, every year in Europe, uh, without a doubt, either France or Italy will have the largest arrival profile. Mm. So why is that? Well, because their customer base, which is Europe, is right next door. And so you don't have to travel 18 hours or 10 hours or mm. 8 hours or 6 hours by plane in order to go from one to another. And so Japan, in that, and then from that sense, is the closest winter place for one thing. Mm. I mean, I see it already because, because uh, I, I lived in Hong Kong. For, I'm from Indonesia, but I lived in Hong Kong for 30, 39 years. And all my rich friends, who can afford to take overseas uh, holidays and so on. Mm. In winter, used to go to Canada, uh, what's it called, the, 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 the important ski area there. Mm. Hmm? Whistler. Whistler. Whistler, you could find everyone from Hong Kong there during the winter at one stage or another. Today, they're no longer there. Where are they? Niseko mm. in Japan. Mm. A, because it is closer. It is seven hours or six hours from Hong Kong rather than 14 hours from Whistler. Mm. Second reason is basically the food. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to downgrade Canada, but, <laughs> but Whistler food is not very good. Oh. <laughs> Whereas in Japan, I can assure you, no matter where you go, no matter how humble the restaurant, the mm. food is excellent, mm. great food. Mm. And then, of course, the safety aspect. Mm. I mean, even, even well, Canada is safer than America these days, but not that by much. So therefore, for all those reasons, I think Japan is just about to pop. Mm. Especially so since the government now is finally, uh, I think, uh, I can ask Mr. Abe's advisor, mm. I think they have become aware yeah. how important the tourism industry can be mm. as, a, as an element of the, of the national GDP. So for all these reasons, I am concentrating on Japan. Mm. Wow. So, so you, you think it's worth betting on the 
inbound tourism-related investment in Japan is very hopeful. I think it's going to explode. I honestly believe that. Because also, the, 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 other, the other aspect, I mean, we were just talking to my colleague here, and, 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 and she knows the Amans, and she, she, she likes to see more of them in Japan. I said, I can do that. That's not a problem. I said, but you know, the, 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 and she says, because many of her friends educated in the US, they did MBA in, at Stanford, and yeah. she says, <laughs> many of my friends would like to come. Yeah. But, you know, and I said, well, one of the problems, of course, is language. And that has to be addressed, because you, you can't serve anyone if you can't speak the language. So English has to be uh, obviously encouraged uh, to be, be developed greater in mm. Japan. Mm. But that is happening. Mm. That's happening. You can yes. see that now. And so therefore, I think all the elements which, uh, that you need in order to, to have a successful hospitality industry mm. uh, are coming. Yeah. Thank you. So please take note, inbound <laughs> tourism-related investment, interesting. So uh, one time you told me Japan has all four elements needed to be a tourism destination, culture, nature, food, climate. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Culture, no for, uh, I mean, uh, culture is obvious. Yeah. Uh, but again. So much place like this. Uh, yeah. But nature, which is, when I say that, a lot of people uh, are surprised. Mm. Actually, what is amazing about Japan which is one of the leading industrialized e economies in the world, obviously. Mm. You never think of that, of that but what is, what is miraculous is how they have been able to retain the, the environment and the, and, the, and, the, and the concern for the, for, the, for the environment. And people who come to Japan don't think of Japan as basically a green place, mm. but it is, amazingly so. Mm. I mean, just, just take, take but everybody knows, Tokyo, Tokyo Airport. Less than an hour from Tokyo Airport, you have the Chiba Peninsula. I mean, the Bozo, uh, Bo, uh, Pen mm. Bozo Peninsula wow. in, in Chiba Prefecture. It's amazing how green that is. Mm. You know much more than I do. <laughs> you see, he says he's never been there, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have many times. Mm. And believe me, it's amazing. There's a fantastic beach. Great. There's a great green mountain. And it is just wonderful. Thank you. Unbiased opinion, <laughs> very convincing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Zeka-san. So uh, the reason why Japanese government is pushing inbound tourism is not uh, just for the business reasons, but I think it's, uh, reason there's a big reason behind. It's a demographic fix. Mm. So government target uh, until the 2020, hosting Summer Olympic in Tokyo, uh, they want to receive uh, as big as uh, 60 million visitors to Japan. <laughs> so I think, you know, the reason why they are pushing uh, inbound tourism is demographic fix. Mm. So we are still allergic uh, to the world immigration, but tourists, travelers, are come and go people. If you can receive as many as tourists and travelers, it can be a temporary fix of our demographic problems. Mm. But it's a temporary. So I want to ask Shibayama-san. So many people are thinking about, you know, Japan needs immigration. <laughs> so do you think Japan will be opening the door uh, for the foreign labor more? I think so. You'll be starting from ho foreign house helpers, mm -hmm. next year caregivers and nurses. And maybe inbound tourists need more hospitality-related people. So could you tell me a bit about Japan's future policy of the foreign labor, taking people from outside. Okay, uh, as Mr. Zeka just mentioned, uh, Japan is very, very uh, heartfelt, uh, courtesy-full country, and uh, of course, uh, very, very safe. But on the other hand, uh, a little bit homogeneous. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Warm to uh, travelers, but uh, Japan has not yet fully accepted as uh, permanent members of the, uh, you know, uh, our neighbors mm. uh, so far. But uh, as Mr. Tamura just mentioned, uh, we have to, uh, you know, go on to 600 trillion GDP 
uh, despite of the decreasing population. So the, uh, we have to uh, you know, broaden the acceptance of uh, foreign human resources. Uh, of course, in highly skilled area, but also other uh, fields, such as uh, nursery or households, or even agriculture, and so on. Uh, we uh, already accepted human workers, uh, just like, uh, you know, uh, by ship, uh, in shipbuilding or uh, construction fields, but it's temporary. Mm -hmm. Uh, to Tokyo Olympic Games. I strongly insist, I strongly e am insisting mm. uh, more mm. deregulation mm. is necessary mm. uh, for a doubling of the uh, new uh, residents, mm. uh, expatriate residents. Is there any government target until how many mm. years from now how many you want to receive? Uh, well, we haven't fixed mm. uh, officially, mm. but I, as I mentioned, uh, we have to be sustainable mm. Mm. Uh, by uh, doubling mm. uh, foreign workers. Mm. We have to, uh, mm. you know, deregulate mm. uh, or uh, accept mm. uh, such kind of uh, a sentiment. Mm. Uh, by way of uh, energizing imbalance or so. Mm. Maybe I think inbound tourism, receiving mm. more foreigners, can be a good catalyst, receiving more, I say, diverse people. Nothing yes, but I think, I think it is also important to selectively mm. uh, allow the uh, importation of, of, of talent. Mm in that industry. Mm. I mean, you know, Japan, Japan is obviously, uh, especially the, the Ryogan concept that we talked about, mm. is, is, is highly skilled in terms of the service element. Mm. But, you know, f in a modern sense, however, it would be useful mm. if we could bring in, with work permits, uh, not, not even to become residents, mm. but just to, to be able to work there. Mm. Like in other, other places, I can bring my, my, my colleagues from where in the world, to wherever in the world. I mean, you know, it's just with, with work permits and so on. And I think that's, that kind of inter interaction mm -hmm. uh, at that level, at the working level, mm. is also very important to, mm. if you want to grow the mm. industry. Mm. Exactly. So, as he has mentioned, the Japanese government is very serious about opening the door for the foreign talent. So, I think Japan is gradually changing in this field as well. and. Uh, Tashio-san, you used to be working in the U.S. soil. So, and the uh, Japanese government is uh, pushing not only has a foreign diversity, but diversity in many ways. Uh, try to has a, include more female leadership, uh, workforce, and uh, even the seniors coming back to the workforce. So, do, do you think Japan uh, can do well with uh, more foreigners and more female leadership? So, um to start out, I have one problem with that, mm. is that it's just a number, it's headcount. Mm. It's to increase the workforce. Mm. But in order to be sustainable, I think we need to clarify that is that because we need diversification. Mm. Not because we need more people, mm. but we need more people and more people that think differently. Mm. And I, unless we get to that concept, I don't think it's it's going to expand in a way that will be sustainable. Mm. So that's a problem that I have mm. with women, um, with foreigners, with mm. any, any group of people that we're trying to bring in. Mm. Because I don't see that concept right now. Mm. Mm. Can you have any comments on this as okay. a government? Yes, uh, it's correct. But because uh, our goal, you know, uh, lots of people just see the numbers or ratio of uh, female uh, you know, workers or uh, executives, uh, political uh, people. So probably uh, your uh, statement is very, very important mm -hmm. for our uh, political scene, for sure. You know, you see, you're seeing New Japan, you know, no more consensus driven <laughs> and no more, uh, more proactive. So uh, are, are you, 
basically positive about Japan. Yes, I am. Yes, and uh, yes. taking more people. And, yeah. uh, but it's becoming very competitive. Yes. Japan isn't the only country mm. that needs uh, very high talented people. Mm. So unless we become an attractive country, mm. we won't be able to attract these people. Mm. So I think there's a lot of issues, things that we need to address other than just the number of people we want. Good. Okay. Good. You got it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, you know, the talent, talent wise, uh, you know, uh, many foreign investors are, uh, you know, complaining about the uh, lack of entrepreneurship in Japan. Uh, many people say, uh, since the, you used to have, they told me, you know, you used to have a, how say, technology startup uh, became big as a global company like Honda or Sony, but we barely see those companies anymore. But I think uh, it's happening. Saito-san will be the one. So he's cutting edge technology, supercomputers, and AI engines, artificial air, intelligence engine, a engines, will make a big difference in any field, even our lifestyle, and even the notion of aging or population decline. So Saito-san, why we couldn't have uh, you know, high-tech startups so successful until you come in. Come in. 30 years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. Um, do you think uh, the climate is changing? Yeah, it is changing. Could you touch upon that? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so the past 30 years, yes, that's true. Mm. In Japan, we couldn't find out any Sony or Honda level of very uh, technology-driven company mm. with really high uh, visions and strategy. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, big companies like Toshiba, or Fujitsu, NNC, so on and so forth, those companies gather such a talented, a very diligent persons. And there's no uh, any other place for venture type of company can hire mm. such a very talented person. And in the past 30 years, there was no need to take big risk mm. for those talented person mm. uh, to establish his own venture company type of business because they can do that in their, under the big umbrella of big companies. No. But it is not completely changing. Mm. Look at what happened to Sanyo mm. and Sharp mm. and Listen to Toshiba. Mm. They're all struggling. So now many, many such talented and very skilled very diligent mm. uh, Japanese engineers are now ready to go out mm. to take new opportunity, mm. even taking a big enough risk. Mm. And the other part is, uh, other than such a gigantic Japanese uh, successful big companies, there are many, many, hundred times more smaller companies, mm. small to middle class, middle size companies, mm. where, again, such a brilliant craftsmanship Mm. And the quality level is, yeah, we, we can find out any other place, mm. even in Silicon Valley. I have been there for tw uh, 12 years. Uh, yes, yes. But after the Japanese uh, earthquake disaster, I mm. moved back to Japan and mm. I found out mm. still Japan is the best place mm. to take great assets of those uh, craftsmanship and professionalism of a, any, mm. ki any mm. kind of uh, type of engineers. Mm. So here in Japan, uh, after the 30 years, uh, yes, everything is now dramatically changing. Mm. People are starting to take risk mm. to start uh, high-tech venture companies, and all necessary assets are still there, mm. while top-class assets are there, mm. and it, it's almost free mm. for any type of venture company mm -hmm. to utilize. So that's a summary of why mm. we can change from mm. here for so 10 years. There's a no notorious reputation that you know, Japanese companies has very good technologies and the craftsmanship, but it's very, they are very poor at uh, commercializing, yes. uh, monetizing that. Uh, in case of you, you can do that. Fortunately, yes, for the yes. time being, yeah. yes. <coughs> and I have to emphasize that, two things. Uh, so super, I'm, I'm not developing super, next generation supercomputer system mm. and the next generation AI engine. Mm. Can, can we talk more about that? Yeah. Yes. That's right, yeah. yeah. So 
we are not seeing uh, many news about AI. So uh, Japanese shogi or Go, Go and everything. Mm. And AI is now getting a better diagnostic result than mm. very professional skilled uh, doctors. Mm. But this is even before the beginning, mm. even much, much smaller than the tip of the ice mm. or so we really have to prepare for much bigger impact. So we're daily, uh, we are uh, talking about more than 50% of our job will be replaced mm. oh. by our engine. Mm. But forget about that. That's very tiny part of what we will be seeing from here. So 250 years ago, the first industry revolution, mm. James Watt invented a steam engine. All right, majority part of a uh, blue worker job is, was replaced. Mm. But that's not the most important part. The most important part is such a steam engine has started to do much more than what a human being or any cattle are doing. Mm. So much bigger uh, devices or much bigger power uh, we, we could uh, utilize. That's the reason why we mm. could mm. come to the surface of the moon, moonshot. Mm. So the same thing will start to happen with AI. Mm. So white color things. Okay, we are now talking about uh, replacement of the job, but we really have to worry about much more uh, worry about such a new AI engine. I'm not talking about today's AI engine, but hundred or thousand times more powerful AI engine, which will be available within 18 months. This is what we are doing. Then they will do it. Such AI engine will do what human being is not doing today. They will do much, much more than that, much more complex things. Then the world will be completely changed. Mm. It's just a matter of two, three years from here really have to understand and really have to prepare for that. Uh, one time you told me you, you can fix the Japan's population decline because you can bring about that immortality. Immortality, longevity, yeah. yes, of human life. Uh, it can be technology, a technological point. It is really possible mm. for human being to have, yeah, unlimited lifetime. You enjoyed a very exciting conversation with Mark Milken in Tokyo, and he's very inspired by your talk. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, Saito-san, you mentioned about, you know, uh, you have technology and you have good talent. But what about capital? You know, do you think, you know, Japanese venture capital compared to the size of the venture capital, even in China, even in South Asia, Southeast Asia, it's much smaller. That's but, right. You know, we have so much money, abundance mm -hmm. in our society. Mm -hmm. That's right. Do you think more money is coming into a company like you or you don't feel it anymore. Uh, I yet. really hope so. Mm. But still, we have to do something. I don't know what we should do, mm. but uh, this is what we really have to mm. discuss all together. Yes. Next topic is the biggest, uh, one of the biggest agenda Japan has challenges. So some of you at the plenary session, the Mike American has a very good uh, presentation about uh, the cash help the corporations. Uh, Japan has the largest part of the cash held by the corporation compared to the GDP, its GDP. So he said two, 10 years ago, uh, that uh, ratio was 21%. So Japan's corporation has uh, cash equivalent to 21% of its GDP. But 10 years has passed. You know, Japan is thanks to the economics. I think Japanese companies are making a record profit. But uh, they are piling up the cash, 125% to GDP. This money is not mobilized yet. Why? Why, Tashiro san? Mm. So I think I can actually add to that because in addition to the $23 trillion, there's $17 trillion in individual financial assets. Mm. And of that half, even though interest rates are negative or zero, are still in cash. And so the, this, this is individual financial assets. Mm. And of course, the people managing the 23 trillion are individual retail investors themselves. So that, I think, says something about the mentality 
yes. of the Japanese people. Um, I could also add that if you look at our equity market, 70% um, of it, the volume traded is non-Japanese. That also says something about the mentality of the Japanese people. But the flip side is that we've had 30 years of non-growth. So it was actually, for some people, it was a good thing to keep cash rather than investing in the stock market or in other markets. So I think there's an experiment. We, we need the experiment. I, th I think we talked about there's not being any Hondas or Sonys around. Mm. Uh, we haven't, we experienced good things for not investing. I think it's slowly changing because of the interest rate environment. Mm. We're seeing more companies pay out dividends. We're seeing more companies uh, in, engaging in M&A, mm. buying back shares. So I, the direction is in the right way. If you, the, you're going to talk about corporate governance, but the corporate governance code is helping more companies within themselves because of the uh, exist of, of outside directors talking more about yeah. how we need to use capital mm -hmm. and the capital structure of the company. Mm -hmm. So we're not there yet, but I think we are definitely going in the right direction. Mm. Do you agree with her? Why well, companies yes. are not spending money? Uh, of course, uh, there exists uh, much problem in education or uh, society oriented one, of course. Uh, we are not uh, well informed about uh, investment, especially individuals. Uh, elderly people uh, just want to pile up uh, cash in their closet. Closet. <laughs> and go to the graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the educational uh, or uh, social reform or uh, mindset mm. uh, is important also. But uh, corporate governance uh, reform is one of our uh, biggest uh, you, you know, uh, topic, mm. uh, together with uh, Mr. Shiozaki and, of yeah, course, Minister uh, of Health. Minister of Health. Mm. He used to be uh, the direct member of mm. LDP. And he managed uh, GPIF. Uh, GPIF, yes. GPIF uh, issues. Mm. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, lowering mm. uh, corporate tax rate mm. is another one mm. in order to energize mm. uh, investment. Mm. So, uh, yes, uh, the corporate uh, governance code is prevailing very, very rapidly in Japan. And uh, outside directors exist in uh, almost all companies mm. now in Japan. And uh, another thing, reinforced corporate governance for large uh, financial instruments in order to uh, discontinue unreasonable cross stock holdings, uh, which in effect will reduce the risk of stock price uh, friction. So the thing is rapidly changing in corporate governance, mm. so probably uh, another uh, several years, in another several years, uh, investment will uh, increase more and more rapidly. I think it's a very good uh, opportunity for you to lobby directly to the advisor. So <laughs> do you have any ad additional push for the better corporate governance with any you know, details? So I think right now, and it's mentioned that mm -hmm. um, all the companies are saying that they're going to follow corporate governance more than 80%. So they haven't really thought through. I think um, I, I, we're going it through my company. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have corporate governance. They just follow it. They don't have any heart in, in it. Oh. And it's going to take some time. But I'm sure, because Japanese being very diligent people, they will get there. But it's not going to be overnight. So I think the mistake is that just because they have it, doesn't mean they're going to follow through on it. Mm. So that's where we have to go to. Okay. Uh, it's just not numbers, as I said before, but we need a heart in the corporate governance. So and it's, I think it's part of my company's job to make sure it's done. So you mean we have to kick the ass of the CEOs not working properly? <laughs> so. um, not all of them, but some of them maybe. <laughs> Preliminary session of hold stock stockholders, mm. probably. Yes. Of course. So do you have any comments on this you know, as a potential receiver of the funds from this abundance Japanese corporation has 
Yeah, of course. Uh, not only asking government or big companies to mm. invest, mm. we uh, venture company side uh, will have to be attractive enough mm. to be invested. Mm. And I think within two, three years, yeah, there will be many such attractive venture companies uh, will be established in mm. Japanese market, mm. I'm pretty sure. So uh, the, the, the many investors, foreign investors told me that, you know, Japanese uh, corporates have to understand, uh, you know, there's a risk in investment, but also there's a risk not doing anything. So you have to compare uh, these two together. So I think that can be said, but interesting move uh, was done by the South Korea. <laughs> so South Korea, there's, uh, the government introduced the punitive tax on the sweeping cash held by the corporations. How do you like this kind of idea introduced by the Japanese government? government? Interesting. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Kicking the ass of the, you know, not working CEOs. I don't like it. You don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, do you think uh, Japanese uh, corporate governance will bring about more change in yes. the attitude of the CEOs? Yes. Mm. You're positive, and you do more for that. I can see it because I have, um, for example, I have friends mm. that have been invited on boards of uh, companies, um, and they don't have anything to lose. Mm. They're very outspoken yes. people, mm. um, and they will, initially, they were forced to have external directors, mm. so they don't want outspoken people on their board. Mm. Oh. So I think this is the phase that we're facing right now. Mm. You have, they have numbers, but the contents. But I think they will get there because the outside directors themselves will find it more comfortable to mm. speak out. Okay. Mm. Right now, they're not used to it. Mm. Um, but I, I know well, a lot train of- Train borders, right? It's, it's training. Mm -hmm. It's training, but it's also a concept of this is your job. This is your job that you have to speak up. Mm. And right now, I think women have a less um, it's less challenging for them to speak up. They're used to it. Mm. Mm. So I have lots of friends that I, are outspoken people that, are, that find a force, and they are finding it easier and easier to get the company to listen to them. How about the uh, importance of, how do you think about the importance of the education, you know, financial literacy, yes. for kids, and also, I say, providing more training in the investment company like you, mm -hmm. uh, doing an internship with a globally leading uh, company mm -hmm. or something like that. So I think education is very, very important, especially more so because the parents of these children mm. have mindsets that that is a problem right now. Mm. So you can't just rely on the parents to raise their kids. We need more new blood so that they understand what they are going through. and. It, it can be done in various places, but the school is the most obvious choice. Mm. Okay, so money is big money. We have big asset, we have uh, educated populations, and we have talents and craftsmanship, and uh, we have beautiful assets like uh, nature, culture, food, climate, and uh, big asset is moving toward you and you, and the Japan is changing, and the Japan is opening a door to the world for foreign labor. We are taking more people from outside. It's a beautiful story. Beautiful <laughs> story. Yes. Why not? That's why uh, Mr. American visited a uh, few days in my country. So that's the end of the story, I think. And uh, if you, we have uh, last three minutes. If you have a very quick, condensed one question, <laughs> so I can take. Quick question, quick, please. Yes, thank you about uh, uh, KO Business School from Japan. I, I question to Mr. Uh, Zeka. Uh, because the, uh, why, you know, the uh, Japanese real value always, you know, hidden, you know, oh. still hidden. Mm. We, we need the still Kotaro Tamara to advertise here. What, what is missing or what kind of the uh, fact to uh, accelerate change of Japan from your point of view? Because one word, please, one word. <laughs> Sorry? One word. One word. One word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> opening up. <laughs> Japan, Japan the, the, the amazing thing about Japan, Japan's culture is, 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 is amazing, but it has been basically uh, hidden 
<laughs> it is very, very difficult to, to explain in one word, but also language. I mean, you know, it's just opening up. I can see that. My, my grandson went to school in America for his secondary education. And in his class, uh, there were, for the first time, something like 20 uh, foreign students. It was very, basically very, uh, what do you call it in America, but, but in, in Massachusetts. Uh, but of the 20 students there, my son was an Indonesian boy, and he was one Japanese boy, his roommate, and the other 18 was Korean. Yeah. <laughs> so that tells you a lot. And, and that is what you need, is the opening up, opening up, opening yes, up. Opening up. And uh, maybe has an AI engine uh, will kill the language barrier. I think so. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yes. So his technology will helping us more globalized. And cool so, Japan strategy also. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. That's right. Thank you. So uh, last uh, lap up, uh, how many of you uh, think about increasing <laughs> the investment in Japan? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you. see you next week. Uh, see you next year again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very, very, very